Please welcome Larry David. Thank you, thank you. That's very nice, lovely. I only hope you feel this way when I'm done. Because I could destroy this night in two seconds. <laughs> easy, easy. My question is, what do these people have against Steve Martin that they would even ask me to do this? <laughs> I mean, they're giving him this prize. It doesn't make sense. I'm the last guy you want to do something like this. I mean, the fact is, I don't really know Steve that well. You know, we've been introduced a few times in Los Angeles. And the last time we ran into each other, we realized we were both going to be in New York at the same time, so we made plans to go to the theater. I thought, great, I'll get to spend some time with this comedy legend, you know, one of my idols, and really get to know him. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> so we met outside my hotel and started walking to the theater, and we saw this homeless guy. Yeah, and I got to tell you, when I see something like that, it really touches me. You know, it's just the way I am. <laughs> Most people don't know that side of me. They think I'm the guy from the show. I'm not that guy. That's not me. That's a role. Okay? Come on, get real. <laughs> so I took out my wallet and I gave him $50. No big deal. No big deal. I give it out. I don't care. Steve, by the way, not only doesn't give the guy a nickel, he insults him. <laughs> he says, get away from me, you lazy bum. Get a job. <laughs> I said, hey, Steve, come on, take it easy. He said, I don't like bums. They creep me out. <laughs> you see, you know what? I really shouldn't say anything. You know, he's getting this Mark Twain prize. It's not, it's not right. But come on, insulting a homeless guy? <laughs> I can tell you Mark Twain would have done that. <laughs> so the homeless guy staggers off and we continue walking. And then I spot this cat stuck up in a tree. <laughs> you know, I'm not a big cat lover. Their food always stinks up the room. They're mysterious. I don't really like mystery. But when I saw that decrepit little kitty cat up there, I knew I had to help it. That could be some poor little girl's cat. How's that poor little girl going to feel missing her pussy cat? Again, a side of me you don't get to see. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but I'm really quite a treat. Anyway, when I told Steve we had to save it, he went crazy. Have you lost your freaking mind? If you want to help the stupid cat, go ahead, but hurry up. He said this. You big Mark Twain prize winner. Your big reason I had to dress up like this when I had two tickets to the World Series. So I shimmied up the tree. Yeah, that's right, I shimmied. I got the cat, who was totally dehydrated and missing a leg. <laughs> Poor thing. And then I said, Steve, could you please hold the three-legged cat so I can climb down? And when he saw the cat, he got so freaked out, he urinated all over himself. And then he took off down the block, and as he was running, he dropped a piece of paper. I picked it up, read it, and then later, when we took our seats at the theater, I handed it back to Steve, who said it was a new piece he'd written for The New Yorker. I said, Steve, you didn't write that. Dorothy Parker did. <laughs> All right. You see, they shouldn't have asked me to do this. I, 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 but I can't help it. I got to be honest. Did I say something wrong? Should I not have said these things? All right, anyway, then the curtain went up, but it was really hard to watch the play because Steve wouldn't shut up. <laughs> Apparently, he'd been considered for a part, 
but he didn't get it. He was so consumed with jealousy that he kept criticizing everybody and making rude, nasty comments. At one point, he even yelled out, can't hear you. <laughs> Then, at intermission, he walked into the lobby, started yelling, hey, everybody, it's me, Steve Martin, the Mark Twain prize winner. That's right, Mark Twain, ever heard of him? At which point, he reached into his pocket, took out a flask, and started guzzling some bourbon. I said, Steve, what are you doing? You can't do that here, are you crazy? He said, ah, shut up, you dirty Jew. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, all right? I'm not a violent person, but I wasn't gonna stand there and let some mean, selfish, plagiarizing, incontinent, cowardly, drunken egomaniac attack my heritage. <laughs> so I popped him. Right his nose, started bleeding. Oh, you should have heard him cry. It was sickening. My nose, my nose! Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, should I not have said anything? Did I, did I... I ruined the whole night, right? Did I, did I ruin the whole... I told you, they asked me. Well, maybe next time you'll give this award to someone who really deserves it. <laughs> you know, someone whose personal conduct is beyond reproach. <laughs> someone like, eh, eh, you'll figure it out. <laughs> Meanwhile, why don't we all watch another clip from Steve? In this piece from Bowfinger, Steve plays a man desperately trying to get a deal from a major studio executive played by Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> 